Okay, this is video one for section 1.4, quadratic equations. We'll probably split this lesson into um, two, possibly three videos, but this again is video one. And we're going to be covering uh, solving a quadratic equation tonight by the zero factor property, the square root property, and um, completing the square. Okay, just a remember here that a quadratic equation in one variable is in this form ax squared plus bx plus c a, b, and c are real numbers a can't be zero and this is called standard form and quadratic equations are referred to as second degree equations uh, because the highest exponent on any variable is the 2 and that's how we determine that it is a quadratic because quadratics will always have a highest exponent of 2 which is also referred to as the degree. Alright, this says it uh, solve using the zero factor property. The zero factor property um, just states that if I have two things multiplied together, so say I have an a times b and that's equal to zero, then either the a has to be zero for the product to be zero, or the b has to be zero. And so in quadratics, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and factor it into two things, and either one of those factors has to be a zero to be equal to zero. So my first step here is to get the quadratic equation on one side and zero on the other. So I'm going to move the positive 3, and that's going to give me 6x squared plus 7x minus 3 equals 0. And now my next step is to take this equation and factor it. And now since I do have a leading coefficient, and I have no greatest common factor, I am going to have to split the middle term into 2. Okay, so I need something are two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and remember we get that by 6 times negative 3 but then add to this middle term of a positive 7 and the numbers that do that for me are going to be 9 and negative 2 so this middle term of positive 7 is going to be split into the terms 9 and negative 2 and so I'm just going to do a little rewriting here this is going to become 6x squared plus 9x minus 2x minus 3 equals 0 and now I'm going to factor by grouping so I take the first two terms 6x squared and 9x and I can factor out a 3x so factoring out a 3x I get 2x plus 3 and the second two terms I can factor out a negative 1 which leaves me with 2x plus 3 and now the common term is the 2x plus 3 that I factor out. So my final factor form is 2x plus 3 and 3x minus 1 equals 0. And this is where our zero factor property uh, will come into play. So the zero factor, pro zero factor property says that either this term has to be 0 or this term has to be 0. So using that information I can take these factors and set them each equal to 0 to solve for x. And when I do that, I get x equals negative 3 over 2 and x equals 1 over 3 for my two solutions to the quadratic. And I do want to mention that a quadratic solution can be called a solution, an x-intercept, a root, or a zero. And we can also solve quadratics uh, using the square root property. And the square root property just states that if I have something that looks like this, I can take the square root of each side and the result is a positive or negative um, answer, solution. And there's some other information here that you can um, read and take down in your notes.
So this is solve the quadratic equation, and I'm going to use the square root property to do so. So all I have to do is take the square root of each side, and that leaves me with x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 17. And I cannot do anything to the square root of 17. It will not reduce in form whatsoever, so that would be my solution. And I can write my solution in uh, braces to represent the solution set. Right here is going to be the same kind of situation, square root each side, and I get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of a negative 25, and I can do some things to the square root of a negative 25. I can um, take out an i to take care of the negative, and then the square root of 25 would be 5. So this is going to be plus or minus 5i for my solution. And again, I have a binomial squared equals 12, so I can take the square root of each side, and I get x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 12. And then I'm going to get x alone by adding 4 to each side, so I get a result of x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 12. And I can reduce the square root of 12, or simplify the square root of 12, I should say, um, because 12 is 4 times 3 and the square root of 4 is 2, so this is going to become x equals 4 plus or minus 2 root 3. And I was going to cover completing the square in this video, but I believe that we will stop here and cover completing the square in a, in a separate video um, on, the following, on the following night. So this will be all for this night, and I'll see you in class.